Hey guys, this is Mel, and I am back to talk about Arrow, episode 709, titled Elseworlds, part 2, which premiered Monday, December 10th, 2018, on The CW. It is part 2 of the three-part crossover event, and I was so excited to talk about this one, guys. So I'm recording uh, a few hours after the episode has aired, so huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. Otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen, so take a moment to remind yourselves of those. So I'm going to start... Try to do this in 20 minutes, so let's start the clock and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So, uh, timeline-wise, this picks up right where part one um, took off, or ended, I should say. Um, but now, it's enough time, or I guess it's no time, considering we're dealing with super speed. But um, we see Barry, Oliver, and Kara traveling to Star City to get reinforcements there. So, a reminder, this is part two of the three-part crossover event. So, there is that. A villain of the episode um, is still going to be Dr. John Deegan. He's actually in a more um, prominent um, antagonistic role in this episode. And then you got his sidekick being the monitor trying to help him feed into his uh, rewritten reality. So, there's that. Episode breakdown storylines. I'm going to pick give you, like, three different ones that I picked up on. First one being uh, uh, the recruitment of uh, Team Argus. Second one, dealing with our trip to Gotham City. And the third one being Rewritten Reality, take two. So with recruiting Ar Argus, we get um, Oliver, Barry, and Kara going to see um, uh, Diggle, Curtis, and Felicity. And then they're later joined by uh, Caitlin and Cisco, And they are pretty much tasked with trying to figure out what's the source of these lightning storms. These red lightning storms that have traveled from Central City to Star City because it's following Barry and Oliver. Um, they seem to be the epicenter of it. So there's that. They do find out that this seems to be the cause of someone trying to breach over to send a message, and that is Flash from Earth-90, uh, trying to get a message to them saying to get the Book of Destiny, and all they have to do is open it to set things right. Um, so there is that. So while that team is figuring out things there, Oliver Berry and Kara go to Gotham City to try to find um, Dr. Uh, John Deegan. So with there, we um, find out um, or we meet Kate Kane, played by Ruby Rose, and we find out that she is Bruce Wayne's cousin. We do also find out that Bruce Wayne and Batman ha left Gotham City three years ago, and Kate's tried to um, um, take over the company or try to rebuild the company. Um, kind of similar to what's happening in Supergirl with Lena and what she did with uh, Luther Corp and turning it to L Corp, but anyways, I, I'm getting sidetracked. But with this, um, we get Barry believing in Batman while Oliver thinking that Batman's a myth. While Kara knows exactly that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Uh, so we, we get a little bit more of Kate um, in this episode. Kind of where she's going from and like what, she, um, what she's trying to achieve in the old uh, uh, Wayne building. Um, so there's that. Um, also in Gotham City, we do find out that Dr. Deegan works at Arkham Asylum. Um, and uh, this is also where we see another inmate breakout uh, um, for the asylum. We do see um, some hallucinogenic fights where Oliver believes he's fighting Eobard Thawne, who's wearing the face of Wells, as well. While in the meantime, Barry thinks he's facing Malcolm Merlin, the Dark Archer, while really Oliver and Barry are fighting each other. So that's pretty cool there. They also learn some things from that, too, from their... Um, their opposite um, enemy um, talking trash to them. So there's that. And with the third storyline, with the rewritten reality number two, this is when the monitor gives the book back to Dr. Geek and asks him to think bigger, and he does. And this time, Barry and Oliver don't have their powers at all. Oliver seems to still have his skill sets, though. But now they're wanted criminals called the Trigger Twins. Um, so there's that. We also see Malcolm Merlin, Joe Wilson... Um, who is uh, Slade Wilson's son, and uh, Ricardo Diaz being part of the CCPD and trying to arrest Barry and Oliver. And then we do see Oliver taking Diaz's butt, so that was a happy moment right there. But then we also see an evil Superman, or at least Superman in the full black outfit, um, intercepting Barry and Oliver's escape. And that's how the um, episode ends, with its last moment being um, Barry and Oliver... Uh, getting um, interrupted by evil Superman saying there's no place like I, I, I'm paraphrasing but there's like there's no place you can't run where I can't find you type thing so there's that tidbit wise so let's go into that um, Barry and Oliver realized that playing their swapped roles wasn't going to be the goal this time as they've kind of overplayed it this time around Oliver tried to calm the situation down which 
with his talks, which didn't work. And they very um, pretty much turned the situation into a fight very quickly. Um, so he made things escalate a lot. But it's pretty funny how like everyone recognized Oliver Queen, and then they like they were like sh- scared shitless about it. And then Barry's just like brooding and glaring during the whole time. It's just it was funny. Um, but anyways, we do see the return of Joe Wilson. Um, in the de- in the Deathstroke type suit, he doesn't wear the actual mask like his father does, but he is um, he's fighting Diggle when uh, our three superheroes um, uh, interrupt in the in the first scene of the episode. So there's that. We also will see Oliver not wanting to tell Felicity about the swapped body situation um, because there was enough going on between them. However, Barry did not know that Oliver and Felicity were having issues. So. That's a little awkward there, but she obviously she does find out because of the teens flubbing of trying to keep a secret. So there's that. Also, we get the monitor claiming to be testing worlds with the Book of Destiny to prepare them for a bigger threat than him. Um, he does comment on the fact that Earth One is the first to acquire the book um, for themselves, even though he takes it right back from them. So it's a short lived victory for them. So there's that. Also, we do see Flash of Earth-90 commenting on the fact that he knows Diggle and that he noticed that Diggle is not wearing his ring. So is that insinuating that Diggle is not married to Lila in this universe or in this reality, or is it a different ring that he's referring to? So there's that right there. But moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode, there's two different ones, okay. So as the Arrow format, when you start off the episode, Oliver goes into this monologue and kind of summarizes like what he's been up to, like where he's in, and stuff like that. But this time, it was Barry doing it in Oliver's place. And what was so cool was that all the scenes that usually see Barry, or usually see Oliver doing, like, his time in a prison, um, his reunion with Felicity in uh, 708 after he got out of prison, him being the Green Arrow, um, him working with the CCPD, all of that, they were reshot so that it was Barry in those positions. And that was just so... I wasn't expecting that. And that was just, like... Because, like, in the Flash beginning, when Barry had his own monologue, it was still Barry. It wasn't Oliver um, that took his place, I don't think. But I was so shocked, yet so pleased that we got to see Barry doing it in his way. And then also seeing him in those positions as well. Because that means we got a Barry and Felicity kiss as well, too. And we haven't seen that since episode 104 of The Flash. So that was something there. And it was a little... It kind of makes up for... The fact that Oliver kissed, or Iris kissed Oliver, so it makes sense that Felicity would kiss Barry, too, just to make it fair. But then Oliver gets to kiss Felicity as well, too, in this episode. But anyways, that was the most shocking was to see Barry doing Oliver's monologue, which was just fantastic. But in the actual episode, the most shocking moment was that we got to see the return of Malcolm Merlin, who we haven't seen since uh, 623 of Arrow on Lee and Yu. Um, so there's that. Plus, we got to see... Um, the reverse flash in the form of Wells again. And they both appear during a drug hallucination fight scene, which was just phenomenal because we get to see a, a fight scene between two archers and then a fight scene between two speedsters, yet done in a way that they're still fighting each other. So it was just like, it was so bizarre, but it's so crazy. And I was just like, fantastic. So I'll leave it at that. We're moving on to top three favorite moments. There's definitely more than three. I'll give it to you there. First favorite, I, yeah. did I put them in order? Okay, they're in order of when they happen, not in the order of, like, like the most favorite. But, like, when this happened, this went straight to the list. And that was Felicity and Caitlin talking to each other. And this is with Caitlin going over to Felicity and trying to reassure her that uh, there's nothing wrong with their marriage. Uh, Iris has experience with telling if Barry is Barry or not because she's had a few written, rewritten realities and timelines where there, it was questioned. So... Caitlin was trying to reassure Felicity, you should compare yourself to that. It doesn't mean you know Oliver any less and such like that. So it was just like, I really love that bonding. I really love that connection. I really love how Caitlin was telling Felicity to not give up on Oliver, that um, if there's love there, that you fight for it. It's just like, this was the conversation that should have been happening. It's just like, oh, I feel it. I feel that friendship. I've missed that friendship. I don't think I've seen it since maybe like season one, season two, when Felicity would... Um, visit uh, Star Labs and keep them got to tag long. It's just like, yes, I love their friendship. And then just see them bouncing ideas off of each other. And then, or another thing as well, too, was when Felicity was giving like this really, really extensive like explanation of what her device was doing. And then Diggle was like, please 
what's the dumbed down version of this? Or what's the dumber version of this explanation? And then she gives it again. He's like, very, very dumbed down version. And then Caitlin gives him the that version. And it's like, she understands Felicity's language. And I just love it. It's like, they talk the same lingo. They understand each other. Um, they compliment each other. I love these two. I love this friendship. So it's like, that was a favorite there just to see them having screen time and working that as well. Plus a bonus was the fact that we got to see them both in their element. Felicity doing her hacking. Caitlyn being in the field with her killer frost, popping in and out and stuff, like actually owning her skills. That was just awesome right there, which leads me into my next favorite and was the fact that Barry, real Barry, rushing to Caitlyn when she's hurt. Like there was no other focus to him. He just went right on in to check if she was all right. And it's like, I miss that so much. Yeah, I hate the fact that Caitlyn got knocked out. But it so was worth it when Barry went over to check her. Because, like, again, like I've said, their friendship has been lacking ever since 506 of The Flash. I've been seeing more and more screen time between them, more and more instances where, like, yes, that friendship is alive once again. So it's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll leave it at that. Another favorite of mine was Kara and her, um, and her dynamic with Kate Kane. I mean, uh, loving the conversation they had between them, it was definitely a way for us to find out who Kate was. It was just great. And then, like, the little comments between each other, that tattoo comment, oh, my God, right there. Like, I really needed that. And then also to find out at the very end that Kara knew that Batwoman was Kate just because of her x-ray vision. She saw just how many tattoos she has on her body. And just, like, and they brought that up, too. It's just like, oh, I... And then they comment on the fact that we could have made a great team. And then, like, it was, like, one of the best. I'll put the quote right on screen for you, though. It's just like, oh, I wish I saw more team-ups of them then. I wish they were on the same Earth so we could do see them teaming up with each other. It's just like, I'm, I'm liking Kate, for sure. She's definitely someone we haven't seen before. I do like the fact that she does have the short hair while the Batwoman... Um, uh, uh, suit has the long fluorescent pink hair so it really throws people off where it's like it's really um yeah like it's not like oh she kind of looks similar it's like no unless you like take the mask off you the hair makes it look like a really different person and I do like she's covered completely because with all those tattoos one tattoo could easily identify her so I appreciate that I definitely like the introduction of Batwoman for sure. If it actually does get greenlit to go become a, a separate spinoff, I'll definitely check it out to see what it's all about and stuff. So yeah, for sure. But moving on from that favorite is Barry and Oliver as a whole. Once again, their dynamic is just fantastic. I love the friendship between the two of them. I love that they're still constantly learning from each other, even if they have snapping um, remarks at each other. Just like they they do act like brothers to me. Like the 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 constant like petty arguments or like trying to learn from each other and try to make each other understand certain things and stuff like that it's just like i love them it's just it's in one of the best friendships and I'm, that we get in the crossover so i'm glad we get to see it specifically i like it when they talked about that hallucination fight that they had when oliver was fighting the reverse flash um he learned a few things about what barry actually had to deal with and then vice versa with barry learn a few things from Malcolm Merlin during their like um, smack talk as they fight and then they I like that they brought it up to each other and how they were understanding the fact that like um I didn't realize like how much you actually go through or I didn't realize what you've actually gone through is just like showing appreciation showing how much in awe they are still coming out on the lighter side of things and not going down the path of darkness for them so really appreciate that conversation there. Um, I also appreciated uh, Barry's advice to Oliver about Felicity and how he's telling her, he's like, um, you need to let her know uh, with the line of work that we do, um, we don't know how much time we will have with them. And just telling Oliver is like, she needs to hear it from you. It's all right, like kind of reminding him, like it's okay for them to change because that, and then like Oliver, it also leads to, my another favorite was the fact that Oliver told Felicity about how they're changing and how, but that's a good thing because it shows that they're growing. It shows that they're evolving. And then, like, he was reassuring her that, like, even though they change, as long as their love for each other doesn't change, then that's all that matters for them. As long as they still love each other, then they can continue at changing and growing and evolving. And that would be great because that's what you're supposed to do. So I really appreciated how that, how the steps were taken to get to that conversation with uh, Elicity. 
So I do appreciate that for sure. Absolutely. Um, but let's move on to top three peeve moments. Only peeve I had, and I really had to think about this because otherwise I wouldn't think of any peeves in this episode. I really think this, I loved part two better than part one. Um, but a small little peeve I have to say is that Kara's moment in the Arkham Asylum when she um, yanks off her glasses and uh, yanks open her shirt to show her Supergirl symbol. It was a little weird. It's a little delayed. I mean, like it, it stayed too long on it. It stayed on that frame a little too longer than it was supposed to. It just felt like, okay, now you're just standing there with your shirt yanked open. It's like, what is that supposed to do? I never understood that move. I mean, like, especially when you're surrounded by other people, you're not, it's like, I figured with their super speed, especially with Superman and Supergirl, I figured with their super speed, they just yank it off and like change in like in a blink of an eye. It's like, why are you yanking it slow motion? So that was the only peeve I had because it just looked so awkward for me. But other than that, I loved this episode. I loved this part of it. I was just like, it was a joy. I definitely loved it. Uh, Cisco and Caitlin joining in were just like huge highlights as well. Um, just seeing Barry, Oliver, and Kara working together. Seeing Kara and Caitlin working together as well too. It was just like... And then Killer Frost as well. It's just like so many great things in this episode. Definitely my favorite so far out of the two parts. We'll see if part three um, beats this or not. But well, remember, most of the look back on this episode, crossover part two. So there's that. But moving on to random questions very quickly. First one, who is the biggest threat that, or who is the bigger threat that the Monitor claims to be preparing um, them for? I mean, why does he feel like he has to prepare them for anything? Ooh, and I'm wondering if it's the Thanagarians. I think I said that right. Remember they were mentioned in season one of the Legends of Tomorrow? They were supposed to be the big, huge threat that Vandal Savage was needed to um, overthrow. Um, and that's why the the Time Masters wanted, didn't want to intervene with him. So I'm wondering if it's them or if it's some other force that's supposed to be coming. Plus, would they be worse than the Dominators? I don't know. But um, is this a bigger threat? Something that like the crossover we have to deal with together and that's like, mean we're going to get like a second event or is this something building up for next year's crossover event many questions surrounding that one but next question was that is that all we're going to see of the flash from earth 90 he was there for a little moment i he got sent to his earth by the monitor are we going to see him return again what's going to happen so there's that uh next question if dr deegan has rewritten reality to the point that we have an evil superman is that Superman of Earth-1 or is that Superman of Earth-38? Because I could have sworn at one point in the promo for Part 3, which I'll talk about in a moment, I saw both Supermans fighting each other. So, if that is the case, and evil Superman is Earth-1 Superman, that means Kara has to be there too. That means all the people we know on Earth-38 have to be on Earth-31 somehow, right? Right? So, there's that. Last question. Also, if Dr. Deegan knows everything from the Book of Destiny, I mean, he did mention, he did know that Oliver was actually Oliver Queen and, the like, everything behind it. But, anyways, is that spe specifically him knowing everything to that particular Earth, so he knows everything um, about everyone on Earth 1, or is it that he knows everything throughout the whole multiverse, so he would know everything about Kara and he would know everything about Clark? from Earth 38? Um, or is it strictly he only knows what the Book of Destiny shows him for Earth 1? Because this is Earth. So I'm wondering about that too, because if that's the case, is it possible for him to use the book and rewrite reality on all of the Earths in the multiverse? Or like, what's going on there? So there's that. Also, they really should have taken the book to Christ, to Earth X to, re, re, to fix that whole reality over there and get rid of the Nazis and stuff. Ooh, idea. Now, nah, anyways, predictions. Based off the promo, since they're definitely not going to show what's going to happen in Arrow 710, they did show the promo for Part 3, which is continuing on Supergirl Episode 409. And it showed Evil Superman, which is in the, the black um, suit. He's in charge of Central City. He's taken over Star Labs from the look of it. He's got his own... It looks like... I guess what you could kind of consider his version of the DEO, in a sense, maybe. I don't know. But we do see Kara in the pipeline. So there's that. We don't know. I'm assuming she still has her powers and if she's being kept in the pipeline. We do see her thinking that uh, this evil Superman is a monster. 
and she doesn't agree with him type thing. And then I could have sworn, like I said, that I saw Superman versus Superman, but black suit versus the, the red and blue ones. So I'm hoping it's Earth-1 versus Earth-38, because if that's the case, that means where's Earth-1 Kara for sure. So there's that, but synopsis for 409 reads, Supergirl, The Flash, Green Arrow, and Superman engage in the battle of their lives. That's all it says. And that's like, that's just so amped up and pumped. It's just like, wow. So like any of the, any of the footage we saw of that fight from any of the teasers for the, the crossover event, it's all going to happen in this final uh, part of the series. And there's the timer. So I definitely can't wait for that. And that is pretty much it, guys. But what'd you guys think of the episode? What'd you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and opinions about all of that. This is technically the mid-season finale for Arrow. Um, so if you want to get the wait until next year to get a continuation of what's happening there. Otherwise, head straight to Supergirl to watch part three. But otherwise, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, check my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I reblog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all the good stuff on the found in one place. Go check that out. Um, trying to be up to date as best I can, but uh, it's the holidays. I'm, I'm trying my best. So there's that. WordPress account link for that is down below. Um, anything I post online is connected to my WordPress. It's more detailed. It's more organized. Still a work in progress, so please keep that in mind as well. So, uh, otherwise, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope you come back and see what I have to say about part three um, for the crossover event. But until then, guys, it probably won't be up and hopefully it'll be up by the time you see this video or shortly afterwards. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you a great day, great week. Here you are. Bye for now.